No, we, no, there we hey, go. Hey, we did there it. What's yeah. up, everybody? We made it. Welcome back to the Beer Loss Podcast, episode 194. The voice you're oh. hearing, that's, that's Matt. We have Brandon, Toby, Richie, Zach, and rumor has it. Rumor has it. We might have a sixth person tonight. Back at it. And uh, if you know who that person is, they should be here within five to ten minutes. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. We're, uh, we're going to have a fun show tonight. I'm going to get this out of the way because I forgot it. Most of there. Check out the Deluxe Edition Network. I didn't forget it if you guys are listening from the Deluxe Edition. I, I worked it in there. Uh, check out the podcast of the month, Barrel Age Chicks, the Deep Dark Secrets podcast. Good stuff. Check them out. Speaking of checking them out, check out all these dudes. You guys are looking pretty good tonight. Brandon's rocking that North Texas hat, that uh, the stylist stash, great beard. Toby, he's rocking the normal clocks and color hat. Just, just a stud. Richie, he's like, you know what? I'm wearing headphones tonight. I don't even need a hat because my hair looks good. Not balding like Matt. Producer Zach, he's wearing a hat like uh, like a college kid. One of those dad hats backwards like he's auditioning for a backup in Top Gun. Richie's I, just I, like... I story, though, real quick. Oh. <laughs> real quick? <laughs> fucking no, it's, it's quick. say it ain't goddamn so. So I was at the dealership today getting some work done on the, my wife's car on a recall. And this guy comes up to me, and goes, "Hey man, I'm sorry, but weird, com- but weird question." And he's got, he's like a bigger guy with like a beard, a little bit longer than mine. And he goes, "How long did it take you to grow that?" I said, "This is about a year and a half." He goes, "Bless you." I just sneeze. He's, I'm like, I just kind of look at him. He's like, "I was in Afghanistan mm-hmm. for 18 months, and I had a beard down to my belly button. I had to shave it off before I got back to the states." Got out, thought I was going to grow back and have a big Viking beard. He goes, this is the longest I can get. This is a five-year beard, he says, and it just gets, this mm-hmm. is it. He's like, I love your beard. He goes, it looks really nice. I'm like, well, thank you. That's the first compliment I've ever had. Plugged Matthew's beard, said it's a big-ass beard. It's like 18 and a half inches long. Where'd you plug it? I could have pegged it. Yeah. Pegging. Okay. That's a good one. No, congratulations on, yeah, the, on, on your cool. beard thing, and shout out to your hairdresser. All right. You were saying something about Richie. You probably forgot what you were saying. Uh, Richie's just wanting to make sure that he ain't responsible for the feedback today. <laughs> he's straight up. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to I'm gonna rock the headphones just to be no safe. No playing games. Yeah, no playing games with my heart. And uh, in a second here, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a special guest. I told you five minutes, two minutes with time to spare. The only reason is he probably had a he probably had a 90 second leak that he took out on the side of the truck. But uh, you guys should be excited. I haven't seen his face in a little while. I, we drive by each other every once in a while. I flip him off. That's about the extent of it. So uh, He's aged significantly. <laughs> that is true. Ladies and gentlemen, back in studio for the first time in God knows how long. And if the air conditioner is really loud in his mic, please let us know. <laughs> but it's, it's Logan. What's up, buddy? Hi, Holy guys. Shit, the crowd goes mild. Here, you can kick me for Brandon. <laughs> Good to see you all. No, we, we can do this. Uh, we're prepared. We, we got the six-person cam that was built for the show tonight. Nice. I had a feeling. So uh, if, if you guys do hear the, the AC in the background, we do apologize. Tiny studio, a lot of dudes. Warm where we are. So I walked in the studio. It was 91. We got it down to 78. Nice and comfy. A balmy 78. Yeah. All right. Well, that was good. We got a lot of cool stuff that we're going to talk about that we haven't even decided we're talking about. Again, we're kind of mixing some stuff up. We're just going to have free-flowing conversations as if the six of us were around a bonfire drinking beers, and that's how it's going to be. And hopefully you guys like it. If not, then uh, hopefully we enjoy it because we're here to have a good time, and I think this is going to be a good time. We did spin that wheel last week. There's going to be some conversation about some musicals that we are going to work in. Could be five minutes. Could be 20 minutes. Who knows? I know I'm not a big musical guy, but apparently we're going to be surprised by a, a couple of people in the studio. I'm really intrigued Richie's take on musical because he was like kind of lighting up a little bit when we talked about it. Producer Zach, Zach, he says he's a stu- he's a he's a musical guy. Not overly interested to hear what kind of musicals he loves. No offense, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're different on board games and, and stuff. I'm, I'm maybe maybe it's there. But I, I wanted to ask you, you guys we're different on board games. Like you're in the Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not. Catan. That is not a board game. How fucking dare you? It, thank you, Toby. It is a TTRPG, but we're just going to let him. him. We're just going right. to let him go. Sorry, he just triggered me. He was trying to I trigger you. Got triggered me. Triggered the wrong like, guy. Motherfucker. I see. I haven't missed anything. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> no. I miss you guys. Hi. We, yeah, we miss you too. So That's cheers, a- cheers, everybody uh, who's having a beer and uh, yeah, yeah, or water or. 
We miss yeah, look at us. Too, we, have a, we have a wide array of beverages. We have Miller Lights in the studio. We have some Coors Originals. Richie was drinking Miller. Miller Light. Two Miller Lights. Some Genesee Cream Ale, a water, Coors Original, and Brandon's probably. What do you got? You got like a Kool Aid or some iced tea or? I got a water. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> All right, so uh, to the musical, I, I'm going to ask a, a question I think is going to be probably answered by you guys because this is a genuine question I have. What would define a musical, in, in your opinion? When you're talking best musicals, I don't care who jumps in first, whoever wants to, like, what would you Hon consider a good musical? Honestly, it just has to, well, a good musical or musical. Like, you musical, changed yeah. your fucking question halfway Okay, I'm going to go with what defines it as a musical. All right, so a, a musical to me is something that it has multiple musical numbers that are performed by the individuals that are in said movie or even TV show episode. Because there's been okay. a couple of TV shows that have had straight up musical episodes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. I was curious because I, obviously we went to the Google and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm not even going to Google. I was going to and I was like, I'm not going to Google because I don't give a shit what the top 10 websites to say best musicals. But I wanted to say, you know, what do you guys really think? All right, this is a musical. And Richie, uh, I know you're passionate about this. So I'm really curious. A musical is it is any time basically that they break out in song <clears throat> in a normal situation and everybody else starts dancing with all that crap. Yep. Basically, it wouldn't happen in real life. You know, you're not out there hanging out with your buds going, hey, I met a girl named Sandy. And the next thing you know, they're all boom. Oh, boom. Yeah. Oh, well, it doesn't well, happen well. anymore. No. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think the other part is the story That's has it. to be told through song. Yes. Not all of it. Not all of it. But like th there's been things considered musicals, uh, some Disney stuff and others that, you know, hey, they're singing and dancing, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if the story is told through song, that's what I think makes the, the whole story, not all of it, but um, yeah, that's what really makes the difference between a musical movie or a musical or good musical mm -hmm. or film. Agree so it could even be or or a scene in a, in a, right? Like a scene in a, I'm going to throw one out there. Like it's always sunny in Philadelphia, the, the day man or whatever, the song um, that they did. They did like this whole episode where they were just singing Charlie Days in a friggin' full tuxedo. I, I think Sonny has a couple of what I would consider musical episodes. Yeah. It, I mean, Scrubs had a couple as well, I believe. Yeah. 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 Mad I mean, Men had an episode. Yeah. yeah. That was weird to me. That was an awesome episode. It was dude. good. It was, it was weird, such a though, good wasn't episode. it? That was so awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to come out here and try to start this argument where I think always Sony in Philadelphia is the best musical out there because obviously I know that's the big thing, but they had, they had some cool scenes. There's some people on the internet that would die on that hill, though. Yeah. That's weird. There's probably a lot of hills. I mean, it, it's a great fucking show, but I don't know if I'd ever put it up as like greatest musical. That being said, I wonder how many people have gotten laid with all Sonny in the background. Oh. I've never really thought that, but I'm going to say a decent amount i mean yeah. for a while it was a pretty prevalent tv show that people probably watched and smashed too I yeah don't, i think with the intention of no 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 no, no. To get like, yeah no this makes me horny charlie right, like, yeah charlie no. day's, oh, danny charlie DeVito. day's voice gives me boner yeah. let's go is that danny devito oh my god <laughs> <laughs> the only person that would have would be Yubin. that's the only person i can yeah. think of that'd be like absolutely 100 percent He's whacked it to Danny Danny DeVito. I have no the doubt. Chicken, the humans definitely started cranking it to the blonde in that. No, the waitress. I, I, I honestly have seen 12 episodes of Always Sunny. Let me ask you, though. Did you ever get laid to it? Because I feel like Always you Sunny? asked that question, you smashed to it once. There's there's a reason why I, why I said that, but It's Always Sunny isn't that show for me. It's either The Office or Mad Men. Oh. Mad Men. That I one, mean, but Mad Men gets, Mad Mad Men Men gets you horny. Like there's some parts of Mad Men where it's like, yeah, all right, whiskey, women, late yeah, night, yeah, 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 you know, walking like around in a pencil stuff. screen, yeah, yeah, yeah a, a show that ha is Mad Men definitely gets me fucking hard. <laughs> you got, don't you judge us. You can't knock it until you until you watch it. <sighs> can't knock it until you knock to it. Are you saying? Yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna say you're you're saying. Can't, that can't knock it until they knock one of the ladies upside the head, right? Like, yeah. Hey, I, know the, I don't. I think there's only one spot in Mad Men where there's a little bit of domestic, and I, it's properly addressed, yes. if I remember correctly. Yeah. I think you're right. I, not on my channel. Right. I can promise you that. Fuck. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right, so let's. I, I get. A, I guess. A so musicals. Musicals. Uh, we and we can get on favorites later, but like, 
I guess one thing, are musicals overrated? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. 150 fucking percent. Thousand oh. percent. Yes. And and you're not saying every musical is overrated. You're saying in musicals in general are overrated or like it, I guess I guess my question would be like it's one thing to hate a musical, but like Toby, I know you like you're aficionado of movies anyways. And we all know that we've seen if, shitty musicals. Yeah, if the movie itself isn't good, the musical is shit. Don't care about the music, right? Like the movie, the movie yeah. or the show or the or the story yeah. has to be good. And there are Not there are critically it. there are critically acclaimed movies that are musicals out there. I can tell you right now, I have never watched. I have no intention of watching. I have no interest in watching them. My wife just about shit herself when she was like, "Well, Mary Poppins is a musical." I'm like, "Never seen it." She goes, "The Sound of Music." I was like, "Never seen it." That sound of music decent. is sound of music. Well, I've only seen the original. I haven't seen the Carrie Underwood. Version. Know how I yeah, saw the sound, sound of music, music original is real. I that, saw it on. Good, I saw good. it on the VHS wheel out cart at school. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> so we're all going. Like, yeah, musical's overrated. Musical overrated. But there was one guy that when we said it, was shaking his head no, and that was Richie. So we're feel free to, to battle your way that musicals you are not uncultured overrated. swine. <laughs> you artistic motherfuckers. No, there's it. Yes, I understand what you're saying. If it, it has to be good, it can't just. It's not about the singing, but the story has to work out, and the singing has to be good. It, there are multiple facets that go into that, and the genres for musicals vary. I mean, I don't want to get into names and stuff to kind of explain that, but you definitely have very different sets and taste and things like that i mean from disney to tim burton tim burton yeah, yeah. has a music so uh, thankfully, thankfully not his musical tim burton a couple weeks ago yeah sorry brandon that was kind of the point i was going to make was just that you know i i'm certainly no fan of musicals i'll watch a good musical um i'm not going to uh look out for musicals and oh man the hottest one hit in 2024 i'm not that's not me i've seen that shit in the shower man i but, ain't scared uh, to say it. but i will say this we were all raised as as richie alluded to Disney to musicals in the form of commercial or in the form of a cartoon. So, you know, whether it was Pinocchio or Lion King or Moana, as my daughter's watched a hundred million times in the last two months, Aladdin, um, you know, we, we love musicals too. And, and uh, can sing the songs, whether it's um, under the sea or uh, being in the beast or, you know, color of the wind or whatever it is. Or so anyway, yeah, that's a musical. I have a special part in my heart for musicals and it, but it's got to be cartoons. Pretty much any Disney oh, film is a musical. <laughs> well, I, I, and I was gonna say, I, I think you can be a lover of Disney without without enjoying musicals per se. Yeah, but that's what like I'm saying. Disney is there genres? Musical, of, I feel like a Disney cartoon musical. Yeah, it does fall into the musical category, but I don't I don't view it the same way as I would any other type of musical. They do them on Broadway too. The hmm. Disney stuff and on Ice. <laughs> but still a musical like i was saying there's different genres of it there may be some genres that you're like okay i'm good with that because it's it's just part of the story it's not the story where some musicals are nothing but the singing i think that so and maybe somebody in the chat knows i'm i'm not asking to be a dick i'm asking because i legitimately don't know where is the line between musical and opera do we know? Do us six white dudes? You can understand, understand what they're saying. Yeah, opera is traditionally spoken usually what in Italian, correct? Italian? Oh. Yeah, usually or Spanish. Yeah, yeah it's, usually Italian. Spanish, it's usually Spanish or Italian, the language. I mean, like Spain. Um, the Spanish, entire right? thing is singing. There's no speaking in an opera. Everything right. is Absolutely sold. none. 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 That sounds exhausting. Wow, that would can be. be. Some yeah, of the songs be. are beautiful, and there are songs that you've probably heard in like movies okay. and stuff like that. But a whole, you know, hour and a half, two hours of that, no, I'm good. And My I have brain. to imagine that a couple of guys from the states that we're in probably aren't a bunch of opera goers where we want to hear Italian and 100 percent singing. I don't. I mean, can you guys hear I've my actually mic? Went, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but no. as you as you move away, you get super quiet. So my grandfather was an opera singer and many a times I, you know, walked into him watching Pavarotti or something. And I'm like, 
you're really sitting down watching a 90 minute, two uh, two and a half hour performance of this guy who's sweating buckets and probably going to eat just as many calories after the performance. Um, <laughs> no, who else was an opera singer? So, sorry to cut. Go ahead. You finish your. I was going to say it, it, that's what it was. It's it's like wrestling. It's a performance, right? It's that that's part of the thing is like how much it takes to endure that long of singing. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, that Nathan Kessel, the dude that got yeah. kind of famous on TikTok for the rubber bands and blowing shit up, and now he wax him, waxes himself and does all that. He was an actual world-renowned opera singer. Yep. And then the pandemic hit. He didn't have a job, so he turned to TikTok, blew spoiled milk and shit in his face, got millions of followers. Oh, and shit. Yeah, he had done some pretty cool stuff. We interviewed him once, and we were, it, was, it was pretty neat. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, um, who was it? It was... You've got uh, Mariah Carey and the lead singer of... Oh fuck! What, they, he sings the sounds "Sound of Silence." So the the yes, disturbed, disturbed, yeah, disturbed. The lead singer of Disturbed, David both class, yeah, both classically trained op- opera singers before they went I, into their current yep. music career. I definitely buy that from David Drayden. Yeah, there's a few others I can't think of names, but you're right. Like, yeah, yeah he, him, his is, uh, and that would actually make voice. sense for David Drayden's like stage presence because if you ever watch his live, he's very like disturbed. It, yeah. Yeah. Like he's very presenting yeah, he's, he's not very he's not very engaging on stage yeah. from what I, i've never seen him live but like from what i've seen on like live tapings he's not a very engaging front man he's not like he's not like those that or something up there looking right. up he, like he, holds the mic and, just... and, and projects like yeah. he's, he's yeah. one of the best at projecting that's, his yeah voice. that's a very good yep. way of putting he he projects yeah hmm. so meatloaf was the same way yeah so um I like my mother raised me on like Phantom of the Opera, which is an opera, you know, uh, Les Mis and the, Les Mis. Yeah. some of the other stuff. Like there is some really, really good stuff out there. Um, and we were talking about just the constant song. I think the, the music has changed, though. So you have opera, Pavarotti. I've listened to a full Pavarotti concert once just to, because. Sober? And, no, I don't think I was. Okay. But um, I'm like completely <laughs> amazing from someone who loves music like I do, and I know we all do, but like, it was awesome. And that's nonstop music. And then like, I've, I've watched all those other ones. And then I watch Hamilton. And it, again, it's, it's not opera, but it is a musical and it's all singing, but the music has changed where the singing turns into sometimes a rap or sometimes rock or some, so the music style Hamilton. per song, <laughs> you know, I mean, Hamilton, if you guys have never seen Hamilton, you no, have Hamilton. to watch it. It's okay. first, first of all, don't tell me I fucking live my life. I'm a goddamn adult. Secondly, <laughs> you, uh, you um, like history, Toby, right? This is true. One of my favorite things to do in the history. world is point out people's fucking uh, inconsistencies and in proving people wrong and things like that. This is one of those moments. Uh, Freddie Mercury <laughs> was never classically trained in opera, nor did he ever have any vocal coaching. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Learned it all through watching and listening to others. He was a big fan of it. Was Jack Black opera trained? Would that comment? Ooh, that, I, you that, know what? That one I don't know. There's that that could be. So. That could I have be to true. imagine he Rath, a lot of vibrato in his voice as well. Yeah, I have to imagine uh, Rath probably uh, potentially Googled it before making that, or knew that. Uh, uh, some people know some facts and stuff. Uh, that, that I I didn't know, but to be honest, I didn't know any of them. This uh, musical thing it was a very educational show. Some uh, Peter Colley said, "Hey, excellent show we're watching. Educational, educational." Sang, show. Sang Jester says, "No desire to watch Hamilton, and that's okay." But hmm. if you ever want to educate yourself on just the newer style of of that type <laughs> of, of of a musical of where they're where it's heading, and also the absolute just killing life of Lin Manuel Mar- uh, Miranda. The guy who wrote and produced and acted, go watch that on Disney. It's it's amazing. In a in a Reddit AMA, Jack Black says he is not classically trained. Brandon's been waving his finger for a minute now, so that's all right. We've got two things to say. First of all, uh, I thought Toby was going to go here, but he didn't. the The number one thing you can do with me to make sure I'm not going to do something is to tell me you got to do it. Uh, I'll yeah, never watch that's Hamilton, fair. and that's that that has nothing to do with Logan by any means. It has to do with like everything else, it's the fans that ruin things for me, and I can't can't stand it and won't ever watch it. Uh, yep. Very familiar with with history, very familiar with Alexander Hamilton and how it all went down and his role in the American history, etc. 
Um, when it comes to what I was going to say about uh, not operas, but about uh, musicals is the thing that, that I find the most interesting is people who love musicals likely walk into musicals and they're probably going to like it. But when you can weave the storyline and the music in and out of each other without you're forgetting it's a musical halfway through, um, mm -hmm. that is when it's it's very good. And there, there are many you know examples of that. But I just wanted to, to make a note of that is folks who are writing and, and putting these together, they realize, look, not everybody's going to walk in and pay tickets to see a musical. But if it's a good story and mm -hmm. it gets good reviews, maybe they will. Yep. Yeah, well, that's fair. Lay, Lay Miz was the first one that did that for me. Yeah, Lay Miz is the best. I watched it for Anne Hathaway's tits, and I actually enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I mean, Anne Hathaway has tits. Yeah, Apparently. listen, you see him in Brokeback Mountain. You see him in. That's Lay a Miz. fair question. Uh, you know, Zach, her okay, eyes listen. are up here. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, never have seen Brokeback Mountain. Same. Me neither. No. I can't. You're uh, the first I, person I, I've ever heard said they watched Brokeback Mountain for, for tits. tits. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good one. That's a, that's wow. a T-shirt right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, saw I, I watched Brokeback Mountain for the tits. There you go. I saw Les Mis in Toronto when I was like 14, maybe a, a year younger, older. That um, voice just came out like a 14 year old. What yeah, happened there? When I was 14, 14? I saw Les Mis in, in Toronto. It's basically is a Canadian Broadway. And that's that changed my musical life. Is that it when was, you started loving the Blue Jays? No, I, I was five. Gotcha. Anyways, and... Les Mis is the best. I agree. I don't. I haven't seen that. I can't oh, spell has it. anyone seen Book of Mormon? No, no. But I've no. heard heard it's good. So, the wifey and I went again to Toronto. Uh, so for our honeymoon, I talked her into, "Hey, let's go see a show in Toronto, Book of Mormon," it's and then watch a Jay's game. My wife into on her watch a Jay's game and stayed in in the Rogers Center. So, anyways, my point is this: if you've never, okay, I won't even because Brandon. Name. You don't want me to say Book of Mormon <laughs> is hilarious. It's the same guys. It's Trey Parker and Matt Stone. It is so wrong in every aspect, but it's so funny. And it is a yeah. musical. I've heard good things about it and a huge Ooh. South Park fan. So, of course, I've got to go. It's, it. it's well worth. I have uh, I have read the Book of Mormon and uh, the adjectives you gave to the show uh, can also be said for the Book of Mormon. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious it's ridiculous it's, it's fucked up it's fucked up it's completely <laughs> fucked up we knew we knew we were in for it within like 20 minutes half hour we're dying like we are crying already and half the people in there are you know they're the blue hairs they're going to see a show in canadian broadway and they're they're all going oh no <gasps> people got up and did not come back really like before intermission, it was awesome. For anybody that doesn't know the blue hairs, that's old people, right? Right. Yeah. I just thought that was a more polite way to say frogs. I, at first, nah, you're in Toronto, they have Toronto Blue Jays. But... Sure, that's true. Well, yeah, but there's like there there's comedians that talk about specifically loving doing stand up in front of the blue hair groups. Because the old ladies just get wild when they go to like live comedy shows. So they, they were not happy about this show. I'll tell you that much right now. And actually, uh, on Middle of Somewhere, the, the Cy Amundsen and Chad Daniels podcast that Matt and I listen to quite a bit, uh, both Cy and Chad will say that Mormons are the best crowds to do stand up for because they're not drunk. They're there just to watch you do stand up. It's at a decent hour. So they're not like, it's just they're polite. They come up to you. They ask engaging questions. They're an engaging audience. They're there just for the comedy, not for dinner, not for food, not for drinking, nothing like that. They're just there to watch you perform. Hmm. That's fair. I, um, okay. I, since I haven't even mentioned a, a fucking musical I've watched, I think one of my one of my favorite ones, and I have to, I actually have to give it to a TikToker. Oh, sure. Early on, when I first started TikTok, like 2018. Um, as a matter of fact, the first person that ever came to my house that I, that I knew from TikTok, zombie Dave, um, 84, uh, showed up to my house uh, right around Halloween time. And because I had never watched this movie, he showed up and brought it with him. He's like, we're going to watch this. I was like, Jesus Christ <laughs> drove all the way down from Virginia, uh, repo, the genetic opera, uh, yep. that fucking movie. 
I as soon as I saw it, I was like, I am never not going to watch this movie at least once every quarter. Yeah. And now we watch it every Friday night of the of the annual meetup. So well. never I've never even heard of it. You should watch it. You repo really is crazy. Night. First you mentions Avenue Q. <laughs> and that one's really good too. You have to. It is it is worth the watch if you ever choose to watch it. You I, I don't think that you'd be disappointed in it by any means. I think that you'd All enjoy right. it, but um nice. it is a little bit out there. Um it does also have Paris Hilton, so there just be aware of that. Um oh I'd watch that for the tits. <laughs> yeah, you can you get to watch you can watch it to watch her face fall off. That's enjoyable. So she so she brutally dies in both thing both cinematic devices that she's been. She doesn't in. die. She doesn't die. Oh. She just her okay. face comes off. Spoilers. No, we haven't okay. seen it yet. Jeez. I'm sorry. If you haven't seen House of you Wax. Waxed that, yeah, House of Wax. Wax. Yeah. <laughs> Melts away. I had somebody the other day times. mentioned to me uh, that they hadn't seen a movie. Dude, and this movie was from like 2002. I can't remember the name of the movie, but we were talking about it. They're like, hey, I haven't seen that yet. I'm like, oh, fuck you. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I, I understand if, it, if, if like the latest episode of a TV show came out on Wednesday and here we are on Friday talking about it at work or some shit. And you're like, Hey, I haven't had the chance to watch it yet. I'm going to watch it this weekend. Please don't ruin it. That I yeah, get but 21 years later, but 21 years later, <laughs> yeah. if you have the balls, I'm not even going to say the audacity. If you've got the balls, male or female, I don't give a fuck. You've got balls. If you're saying this, Hey, hey don't, don't fucking ruin that, man. I haven't, had, I haven't watched that yet. <laughs> Fucking strap in, bitch, because I'm getting ready to tell you the entire fucking plot summary of this whole fucking movie now. To this day, if the season finale of House comes up around my wife, she will damn near run out of the house. She refuses to watch the last episode of House because it's called Everybody Dies. And it's... it's that's She's her. watching. Let's spoil it. Does she nope. not like watching like sad episodes of stuff? No, she's a sap for that, but for some reason, I think it's because she doesn't want to know what happens to Wilson. Did did she did she watch the uh, did she watch the episode of Scrubs where Brendan Fraser no. actually dies and Doctor Cox? I watched fucking, it. Like, I just walked in on that episode. Randy, bro, that I'm not gonna lie, that, there's a lot of stuff that made my night. I'm I'm I, I don't cry at a lot of stuff, but goddamn man, the ending yeah. of that one just got me. I was like, fuck. It's spoiler alert. They all become doctors at the end of Scrubs. <laughs> Uh, not all God of them. Damn bitch. it! You said 2002. I mean, that was that had, that had to be some prime movie watching days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, now it's easier, I guess. You can stream, but you know, going to the store, getting a DVD, getting a I love a video VHS. Stores. You know, put them in there. Like that was that was mm -hmm. a thing for all. If there's there's, there's no young here. We're not cold video enough. stores, man. Is it because I, you actually took the time to go get the movie? It was the so whole like, experience. You, it was yeah. the whole experience. You take the time to get yep. the movie, like. Us with our parents, we'd go maybe get some pizza or some subs, go pick out the movie all yep. together as a family where my dad would be like, no, 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 and then make the final decision. Then we'd go, and it was like, we're watching a goddamn movie tonight. Yeah. Like, no one's yeah, on their phone. You... No one's going to do homework. We're, we're yeah. doing a movie. Or like, yeah, or you'd go with like, or you'd go like with three or four of your friends on like a Friday night, and each of you gets a movie, and you guys yeah. are like, dude, we're watching all these movies this weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and right. you like put on bets who's gonna fucking have the best movie, who's gonna have the worst movie, so on and so forth. Yeah, man, fucking it was a whole Dude, ordeal when we were growing better up. Better time. Do you remember getting the VHS from the video store and then not paying attention? You put it in, it's in the middle of the fucking movie, so you're like, ah no, yes. and you have to like stop it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you would get up and you're from sitting the there going, I know like, they charge this it. fucking yeah. 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 Yep. yeah, you weren't having the remote to pop that back. No, we can never no. find a remote. No. Well, and then, of course, a little square black remote for like the stolen cable TV at that time. Right. Not to yeah. mention the fact you used to be able to go there and fucking rent video games. Yeah. 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 Fuck. Like. Mm -hmm. Yep. We had a we had a machine. My grandfather did that was only used. It's only thing that it did was to rewind VHS tapes. Oh, <laughs> yep. Yes. We had one. yep. Yep. Yeah. One that we had one that was actually the shape of a, like a race car. And VCRs were wild. So so was was the yeah. tape the wheels? Yeah. So yep. yeah, and so the reason why my dad had one, and this was his reasoning, we had one as well. And my dad was like, "Hey, take it out and put it in the rewinder." And I'm like, "There's a rewind button on the VCR, Daddy." He goes, <laughs> "He goes, I don't want to wear out the fucking VCR, the so hell? rewind it using that because that's the only thing that goes in like super high speed. 
So he's like, I don't want to fuck up and, and wear out the VCR. So use the rewinder. If that breaks, that's 15 bucks. If the VCR breaks, I gotta go spend another $175. And you're like, ah, that radio ah, show. Big brain on dad. Yeah, yeah. Dad got life figured out. Yep. <laughs> wow. We had I had a family video, and I get it. I'm the youngest guy on the show. But there was a family video in the in the town that I went to college in up until I graduated. So we would still like we would be, you know, three or four of us would pile in my S10 and we would go to family video on the main drag in town and we would get the chocolate covered cookie dough bites and popcorn and we'd rent the fucking movies and stuff. And man, it, it was a good time. Like you said, it was just a bunch of your bros getting together and just watching some movies and until, just hanging out. And it was so much fun. Until Somebody alcohol bought- started, you could one night shop that shit, that whole building, one night shop. You get all yeah. your food, your movies. Mm-hmm. Fucking candy. Yep. Somebody Dude, brought the up- number. The the number of times I've caught my teachers walking out of the back fucking beaded curtain area. <laughs> yeah. And the, the awkwardness. The like, Mister Guskin. I'm like, Mister is my dad. Why are you being nice to me? Like, <clears throat> no, nothing, boy. Where are you saying, Brandon? Well, <laughs> I was just saying. Uh, somebody brought up Blockbuster, and I just I remember. You know, in the 90s, it was a huge time, early 2000s. They still do it. Restaurants and everything still do it. But Blockbuster did, when movies would drop, they would, you know, go along with the movie like McDonald's does with the kids' toys. And they handed out this huge box. I remember Jumanji was the movie. Or wasn't Jumanji. It was uh, uh, Congo. It was Congo they did it for. And it was this huge box with the gorilla's eyes on the front. And you open it up, and there were, like, glasses in there and, like, just a bunch of random shit that made no sense that probably cost seven cents in Thailand to make. But uh, they put it in a box and it was fun. Everybody loved it. But that kind of stuff was cool, like going to Blockbuster. The candy so, was all overpriced, of course, but you always wanted so to you know, get the best movies. Before Block, and so I, I know that you all had one. Before Blockbuster, like, really took over, kind of like Walmart did, right? There were, there were, like, a ton of little, like, mom and pop almost, kind of like video stores. Yeah. And I know you guys all remember the nostalgia of going into those smaller stores over a Blockbuster. What was the name of the ones that you used to go to? We still Mine was them. Main Street Video was the name of it. And there was only one, and it was it was right down the street from us. And it was actually, my wife lived like a block away from it. And I didn't realize that until after, after we, had, we had, uh, a, we had a couple, we had Video King. Yep. Video King. Video what news. was, what Video was, news. Video News. Video is news. The other one. Is yep. that the one, Robbie owned one of them. Robbie owned Video King. Video King, right? Yeah. Yep. What's yeah. the one that's in town right across from the, the Pizza Hut right now? New Video News? That Well, that's the New Media Outpost, new. and that used to be New Video News. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now it's New Media Outpost. So it, to this day, right now, you can walk in there. Mm-hmm. You can still rent movies. Yep. You can rent video games, buy video games. I think you can rent consoles, too, now. You can rent consoles. You can buy anything trade. used, trade them in. Yep. It's it's a pretty it's like a, it's a pretty cool thing. I haven't, I haven't been in there since I've been back, but do they still have the, like, 37 flavored slushy machine hell yeah fuck yeah dude we're small fuck enough yeah. here that they can pull that off yeah which you is can a go... weird thing to say like we're small enough to like it does help the family has a little bit of money so it doesn't oh, see, have I to make I money didn't know that <laughs> yes yeah uh, but um so well jewel i'm sure that the main street video that you had was probably a little bit different than the one that we had that was just the name of it and it was, I because how it was many on main, main street in our before. fuck in my hometown um but the the other thing the other thing that I was going to mention, fuck, I just, oh, I just lost it because I was speaking to do. Oh, the very last blockbuster. So I was doing, I, we used to do a podcast with myself and John, uh, John Johnson. We called it error 404, um, kind of went off the rails and, you know, we ended up closing, but the last episode we ever did, we had zombie Bry on there and we were talking about movies and that's a really good group of people to talk about movies because John is about your obscure, older, like B movies from the 80s. Um, Zombie Bry is really more about like some of your older movies um, and and some of your like like early, like more recent movies. I'm more of your 80s and 90s movies and then like the most most recent movies. But we had a debate. We were doing the debate is is um, is Die Hard a Christmas movie, yay or nay? That was Didn't that we was already a big fight about this. Yes, we did. So, well, well, yeah, I don't know if it's, it's a fight. We, we so a we discussion. had that debate on the podcast, and we were like, "But what does Blockbuster say? Like, what? Like, how? 
what what is it that where does blockbuster put it so zombie bry said well you want me to call him and i said excuse me so he had visited the very last blockbuster he did like a really small documentary there um i think it's in where is it? it's in it's either in washington or oregon oregon yeah, yeah I, was, I was actually I was going to ask who knew where the last one was. I so it, Bri, no shit, Bri, dude. It's like it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Bry pulls his phone out, dials the fucking number, puts it on, and I was like, dude, put it on speakerphone. So they put it on speakerphone, and no shit, the guy goes, "Blockbuster, how can I help you?" And we're like, and he's like, "Hey, real quick question." Um, stu he goes, first qu part of the question is going to be really stupid. Do you guys have Die Hard? And they're like, "Yeah, of course we have Die Hard." He goes, "All right, second question." Where do you, where is Die Hard in your store? What section is it under? And he goes, uh, it's in the action section. And Brian, Brian and I were both like, this is not a Christmas movie. And he, and, and we were all like, ah, and John goes, ask him where, where it is during, during the, the holiday season. Yep. So he goes, all right. He goes, so do you, do you, does it stay there all year long or like, let's say around Christmas? He goes, Oh, during Christmas, we put it in the Christmas movie section because so many people consider it a Christmas movie. That's where we put it. So it's easier to find. And we're okay. just like, fuck man, there's, this is not an answer to the debate. It never ends. Other than you can say ends. blockbuster says that die hard is a action movie throughout 12 months, uh, 11 and a half of the 12 months of the year, and for two weeks, it becomes a holiday movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're on the topic of like 90s stuff, and we're on the topic of debate. So I'm going to ask you guys a question, just a random question. 90s foods. There was some pretty good shit. If you could only save or bring back one of the following three of these, which one would you guys bring back? Would it be the Flintstone push up pops? The fruit string things, which were the designs that had the fruit things. I don't know if you guys remember them. They were there, and you could pull them apart, kind of like he does <laughs> cheese on, sticks. Put them on your tongue. Put them on your tongue. Uh, or the pizzeria pizza chips, which I fucking miss. So you can only bring back one of those. Which one are you guys going to bring back? Again, the Flintstone push-up pops, the fruit string things, or the pizzeria pizza chips. I was oh. sure. I was sure that I was going. When you said fucking pop-ups, I was. that's the one. The push-ups, that's the one. And then you mentioned a, something from my past that I haven't thought of for 20, 25 years, and that's the pizzeria fucking pizza chips. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can taste it right now. Yes. And I haven't had it in 25 years. Yeah, Bring them back. So I don't have there, a dog in this fight because I've, I've never had any of those three things. I've, I've never had any, were any of those three things. I was Not the night. Toby, they Fuck, taste yeah, like pizza. Like yeah. <laughs> Zach's done his math a couple times on that one. Yeah, oh, yeah they, they didn't have those three in your MREs, I would imagine. No, no. Oh, oh. dude, speaking of MREs, I, I didn't send it into the to for Triple T because Matt grilled me on having awful TikTok submissions the last couple weeks. So just fuck it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I was watching a TikTok. Spitters are quitters. Of a dude who... The, he was telling a story about how this charity group that he worked for, he got donated from an army surplus store a bunch of MREs that he couldn't sell. And he didn't think he was going to turn through them before the expiration date. So he donated them to this not-for-profit, and they took him on this camping trip that they brought all these city kids out on. And that was their food <laughs> for the time. <laughs> the first time they crack out these MREs, a kid grabs an MRE, and they're like, yeah, you know, you got to do this, 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 and this, and teach him how to make it. And he's just like, fuck it. I ain't waiting. And he takes the chemical back, rips it open, <laughs> thinking it's like fun dip or something like that, Jesus. down the hatch. What was it like? Down the hatch. So hey, that's I, called I, natural selection. I will say that <laughs> yeah. has had so MRE. So what he's talking about is the MRE heaters. So the MRE heaters um, traditionally have have come in like four or five different styles, but there is one, and I, I'm sure you guys all remember uh, fun dip. Also known as Lick by Lickamade, had the little chalky yeah. thing yeah. with the the little several se separate pouches that you would dip the thing you in. Teach your kids how to do key bumps. Go on. Yeah, so the, the okay. one that has six separate chambers, each filled with this charcoal heating um, shit and powder in it, and it's it's like accordion, and, and they they all have sec. So I can I can see 
where he'd be like, ah, it's like, but at the same time, listen, these things, these things are made for soldiers. All right. And let me, let me explain something to everybody here. If you didn't already fucking know, soldiers are some of the dumbest fucking people on the face of the planet. <laughs> Everything hey, has to be there is there are more warning. I guarantee it was a soldier that ended up fucking requiring a goddamn warning tag on a blow dryer that says do not use in the shower. I promise you <laughs> there are warnings on everything in an MRE as to what is edible and what you sh cannot eat it, like as big letters <laughs> says do not eat on it. That is one of the things that says it. So natural, natural selection, selection. That could fucking go, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but anyway, pizzeria chips. What happened to the kid? They ended the camping trip. We had to go to the fucking ER. So I'm wondering. <laughs> oh God! For a second, I thought he was like. They, they ended, ended the kid. They like that was it. He's just gone. Just, His insides. Well. He boiled from the inside out. He was. He was done. He was chili mac. Wow. It became well. chili mac. <laughs> chili mac. He says. That's the only one I've had, and I like it. They gave him the jalapeno cheese to help clear it out. It's jalapeno, <laughs> jalapeno cheese is, is that's worth fucking money out in the field. So pizzeria chips, Brandon's pizzeria chips. Matthew, uh, I'm I'm also going pizzeria chips. And and Logan left. Logan had to pee. He would go. Logan had to pee. pee. Yeah, he had to pee real bad. We gotta yeah, get that spicy we got, diaries. We just gotta get him a. A funnel and a two. First time he's been here in two and a half months, and he's in his defense. It was the last day of school as, a, as an employee of the school, and I they probably got done early, so I'd imagine there were some celebratory beverages that took oh, yeah, place. Yeah. Once you have at least, I mean, if you we're all getting a little bit older, you have more than two, three, four beers. Then they come <laughs> exactly. out one, two, three beers at a time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm also cool. just thinking of how bad a piss jug would stink in this studio. Not a good time, dude. It would be fucking miserable. Jesus Christ. I mean. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. It's not going to happen. We're 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 ab we're above heaven. I'll, I'll put a hole that goes and drains to the outside. We had that in high school in the bar in the garage we used to party in before we do the piss jar jug. Um, and you guys haven't had them, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll move on from that one. I thought it was a good thing. I'm glad, kind of, you remember the the pizzeria. There was uh, a chips. beard laws okay. should uh, should get it. Oh, sorry, Brandon. Go on. I wasn't going to say anything. No, it's oh, me. I, I, that was really I, weird. I, Oh. I got I got you, Jester. I got you, Jester. I, I'll start this off. My top five fa favorite musicals. <laughs> he was asking was like, about the musicals. I, I, for real, though. Number five, easy. Going off of Disney and the Broadway. Beauty and the Beast. Simple. Okay. Everybody loves that story. All right. The, the um, original or uh, the live action? Any of them. They're all musicals. Okay. Okay. To me, those that's it's well done both in the cartoon version, the Broadway version, and the the live action. Uh, number four, Rent. Never seen it. Never seen it. It, it. it was it's it's so good. It's about a bunch of starving artists. Some of them have AIDS. <laughs> There's a love story. It's real good. Um, number three, yeah, <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera. It's a classic, and I've actually seen it live. Uh, okay. Greatest Showman is my number two. Here you go. Really, that's one really everybody can movie. get behind. Not gonna lie. That like horrible fucking history telling, but fucking great movie. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and my number one, and it's my number one for a couple reasons. One, because it's a musical. Two, because it has murder in it and a lot of blood, and it's a little bit more oh. dark and eerie and stuff and Sweeney it's Todd. and it's directed by tim burton for the movie sweeney todd sweeney That's todd was favorite. was really done well like I mean, really it's done it's well. got johnny depp in it too for Dude, any of those people I, who you know what i'm that sweeney's the name suck dicks i'm just a huge uh uh helena bonham carter fan, fan. Yeah, yeah. I just, like there's a lot of people that are like, dude, she is not very attractive. I'm like, you are out of your fucking mind. That woman is like She's awesome in that movie. Otherworldly gorgeous. She has a different look to her that is just so fucking attractive. Yeah, yeah. She, there's just something about her. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. The movie's awesome. Yeah. Fucking love that movie. I oh, Sasha Baron Cohen, <laughs> the guy who played Borat, yeah, is yeah. In it? fantastic. Yep. In that. Yep. And there's a lot of big, there's actually a lot of big stars. It was a, the Pope. 
Yeah, that stopped because now Sasha Baron Cohen's song from Sweeney Todd is going to be stuck in my head for a fucking year. I'm looking at the bubbers. The bubbers. <laughs> yes, starts going dude. up. Surprised it, it took us 45 bump. minutes to get into our first song. That's that was real. Bum, if we would have had bum, that bum, as a poll, I don't know. And I technically, I did do Greece earlier. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's really weird is like, so when when I used to do my my follow lives um, on TikTok, I would always end with um, a song from Greatest Showman, um, mm-hmm. and then I would usually end it with a song from uh dear evan hansen and now that they have come out with the full movie dear evan hansen i have no desire to watch it oh, yeah? i have no desire to watch it whatsoever but i love the song that's that that is from it i absolutely yeah. love the song that's from it but i have no desire to watch the movie i've never seen it someone told me jokingly he's like dude don't watch it you're gonna cry so i was like okay i won't I don't like crying. Oh. I don't so I don't like get crying. called I'm out. My apologies. So I don't get called out by anybody. My apologies. I was actually thinking of Sasha Baron Cohen's song in Les Mis. Not yeah, I used to say you were humming Les Mis. I'm like, uh, nope. <laughs> yep. I was. Yeah, my brother's. My brother's. Also, that's, that's master of the house. Yes. Yes. My brother's. Also, would pick has Helen about it. Yeah. And the Hugh Jackman version. Yeah. My my brothers would pick on me for liking musicals because. Growing up, I'm an, I was an artist. I did all, every art thing you could imagine. I was in drama club. I directed the drama team of my church. Blah, 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 blah. Did I you ever draw anybody stuff. like a French girl? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> I went to the Art Institute of Atlanta. We have live drawing. and live drawing, I drew many naked people. The problem was is my teacher was cheap. Hmm. And I... Notice that we had one lady that would come in all the time. Not fun to draw. I'll, I'll put it this way. We did what they call jester drawing, which is where you do the kind of real quick. You're just doing the outlines like real quick and stuff like that. Oh and I showed it to my dad and he goes, what's up with her knees? It's like, those are her tits. <laughs> <laughs> those are her tits. Oh, that's awesome. And then uh, <laughs> then I Can drive I to school. I dr- <laughs> do what? Can I get a Can print? You- I don't think I have it anymore, but you should make it. I have questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so- but we found we uh, I, we would pass her on the when I would go to school, we'd pass, pass her, her um, on the street pushing a grocery cart. She was homeless. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's homeless such a chick. bummer end of that story, dude. I knew it was coming. Oh, I knew it was coming. And then every once in a while we got the hot chicks. We got this one chick that I it, I was intrigued. I loved the draw, her not because I mean she was she was hot. So you went to class for the tits then. She had <laughs> nipple uh, nipple piercings and whatnot, but she had this like what's that movie? A uh, dragon, whatever, where the girl has the dragon that goes all the way over the body. dragon tattoo. She had that fucking tattoo. <laughs> it was badass. <laughs> What classic. <laughs> uh, classic. You know, what's that movie with that girl with the dragon, dragon tattoo up her back? I have no, no idea. Oh, it's that fucking foreign film, girl with the I don't dragon tattoo. I've but never listen, seen it. What's listen. that Super Mario video game thing called? Yeah, but all right, so so he's Luigi Strikes Back. He's going down a, a memory lane picturing this really hot chick with nipple piercings. You think we're all gonna remember the name of a movie when that is running through our head? Mm. I, I'm here for you. That's a good, good point. There's, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on if you think Rooney Mara is hot or not. But you see her nipple piercings, and she's naked in that movie. I'm still. I didn't watch that movie for the tits, though. I just watched it out of curiosity. Uh, I'm still thinking about me too. No, but my brother's picked on me until. No, 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 Brandon just picked titties. Can you guys not hear me? Am I not loud enough? I I I couldn't hear you. You have to be like right here for us. I have have never changed anything from what I've ever done from any other night before. So, well, I was gonna say the last, the last couple, Brandon, like you seem to get a little quieter each time. And every time you turn and look at the screen, I like I've done it a couple of times in the middle of you talking. Like, you'll see me kind of put my ear out because I'm having such a hard time hearing you. How about now? I thought you had a tick a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better. That's oh, no, yeah, no. That was good. He's like this okay. mother. Kill it. I was going to say, I, I, you guys were talking about uh, nipple piercings and all this stuff, and I'm still thinking about knee titties. So, <laughs> um, I, I just want to. 
I just want to address something. I know that a lot of people are very used to coming to the Thursday show and having something that's like really super structured and very outlined and like very on topic. Um, imagine this change that we're, that we're kind of working through, which I'm really enjoying. Um, okay. and I, I've talked to, I've talked to Richie. I know Richie's really enjoying it. And, um, okay. Imagine this more like almost any other podcast that you'd come to where you have it's they have that 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 title to catch you. That doesn't mean that's well, the you only have thing a base that's you talked about. Off of. We we're, we might start off. We might even go back to it at some point. But for the most yeah. part, it's a it's a jumping point for us to start with. And then conversations eventually going to skew. Mm -hmm. um, you get we, we want you guys to have an enjoyable experience hearing us just kind of free form conversate with one another and, and just kind of enjoy the banter back and forth and the little story, the little side stories that are going to constantly come. So um, apologies for anybody that this is kind of a shock to because yeah, we are like because a podcast. The format has changed, <laughs> but I think, I think if you, if you kind of open up to letting go of the more structured stuff that we used to do, I think you're going to find this to be a very, enjoyable thing to be a part of from this point on yeah i personally feel that the more we enjoy it too where we're not having to stick to uh almost a schedule or you know something to go through uh, it, it allows it more free from and when we're having fun and enjoying and going off of these random tangents jokes stories yeah. and stuff like that i think it's more enjoyable for the audience it's just gonna take yeah. a little getting used to because it's kind it's of different. an abrupt change but yeah, that's yeah. What, exactly what I was going to say. It's it's going to be a little bit of a you know an adjustment period for you and us, and we'll we'll get much better at it. And I hope I didn't yeah. kill the mood. No, it's all your fault. With it's what? Good to be, <laughs> it's good to be here. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's good I to have been you. here in two months. I'm I'm glad uh, I'm glad I'm back. Hell yeah! You picked what's, a good one. What's the hat, Logan? Oh, so check this out. Who is that? Is that Jay Z? No, it's not Jeez, fucking Jay Z. Tupac. Jesus, is that Bobby Bonilla? It's a minor league team, right? Uh, it's closer to Bobby Bonilla. No, this is who's number twenty-four. Where's those colors? It's Ken Griffey Jr. Ah, uh, 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 right. Ken Griffey Jr. is the responsible for the longest workday of my professional career. I'm sorry, you have bad memories about Ken Griffey Jr. It's not a bad memory. I had a okay. good time that night. I was working at the newspaper. It was the day. It was the night that he got inducted into the Hall of Fame, and uh, yeah, it was just the 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 sports book main cover was what kept us until five thirty in the morning. Speaking of the Hall of Fame, guess who's coming to the Hall of Fame Which to one? play a game? Baseball Which? Hall of Fame. Okay. The Bo Jackson. Bananas. The Savannah, Savannah Bananas. Bananas. Fuck guess, yeah! Guess where else they're playing the night before? Syracuse. Syracuse, Syracuse, which Dude. is two and a half hours from us. So Jennifer, Jennifer Suits, right? Whoever, yep. she seems to really like that team as well. And she approached me. Uh, they're supposed to be in North Carolina. I believe she was talking about sometime in July and she wanted to go watch them. And I was 100% down to go, go see them. Um, but I think she said it was like during the weekend of like the eighth or something like that. And now I'm scheduled to go shoot a movie. Mm -hmm. So they have waiting lists, like they're in the thousands waiting lists for all their shows. So like you get on, you're on a waiting list. My sister's on it for us. Um, good luck. You don't already have tickets. You ba they're basically over a year out now. But that's not to say that other companies aren't just buying the tickets. And Do you know who threw out the first pitch from it? Brandon, the entertainer. For him a couple, probably about a month or two ago. I don't know if you know Brandon <laughs> from TikTok. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm friends yeah. with Brandon. Yeah, yeah, he threw out the first pitch and did the whole dancing with him and stuff. It was really cool to see. I love the umpire. Yeah, he's pretty. Oh yeah, the dude, the, the umpire gets down. It's I, like it'd be I like it'd be like watching our Brandon go and and Fuck start yeah. dancing. Except the umpire is five five. I think like I, he's not a large human. Yeah, he's doesn't, he's doesn't a very tell, short. He's a very short, stout individual. Doesn't yeah. this tell the story of this whole show though? Like, what is the Savannah Bananas as we know it? Baseball and music and entertainment. It's a well, they're the Harlem. Movie. They're the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. Yes. Yeah. It's a. It's, they're it's always a playing the same exact team, the party animals. It's like, uh, what's the team that the Harlem Globetrotters always play? Oh, Anybody fuck. remember? I knew you were just going to say that, and I just yes. it slipped my mind just as I you... just heard it three days ago, and I can't think of it. And also, uh, Jennifer Suits, you have a very valid. Um, you have an extremely valid 
Um, the Washington Generals. Washington mm. Generals. Yep. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, you do have to put on. Okay, cool. So while we're going to finish up this conversation, a couple of minutes left, what we have been doing at the end of the show is, is we take our suggestions, the dudes in the studios, and your suggestions of viewers. We're going to put them on a wheel, and it'll be like – everybody's mentioned a potential title or at least something we're going to talk about in the next episode. So go ahead and get some suggestions in. There's a bunch of stuff we have from the weeks before that we'll continue to leave on there as well. I will also say this, uh, depending upon the, the topic, like the main topic, because of the main topic or the starting topic that you see, um, the more interested the panel member mem members are in it, the longer you're probably going to hear us talking about it. Um, yes. And when you've got several people in here that granted, you know, like I, I like several, I, there's several musicals. I like, like, I like Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love Repo, the genetic opera. I love, um, I, I love that. the greatest showman, little shop of horrors, but there's also many that I haven't watched because they're musicals. Um, and I don't, I don't like putting, I don't like grouping Disney into musicals because I feel like Disney's just its own category. Um, mm -hmm. Like if we were just to talk about Disney movies, yeah, absolutely. I could talk about that all day, but musicals, I don't have a lot to talk about. So I, myself, I'm going to shift the conversation constantly based on what's brought up about a musical that we talk about. So, but if Real it's quick. something I'm extremely into and everybody else is into, you're going to, you might possibly hear an entire hour's worth of conversation about yeah. the topic. Real quick. There's a whole generation of people that love this musical. If it's a musical. Wizard of Oz. It's a musical, technically. Do you yeah, think of I that would as consider, a I would consider that to be a musical. There's several musical numbers that continue to tell the story throughout that. Tell the story. Yeah. But I think it's... I'm going to go with way overrated. The movie's cool. The story's cool. As a musical, way overrated. I'm just saying. Sorry, I had to get that out. I'm not a huge fan. I would fan say if you're, if you were putting it in the top musicals, of, yeah, I, I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because this, the, the musical numbers really aren't the greatest in there. I mean, yes, they do help kind of push the storyline and everything, but not really the greatest musical numbers. It's not like like everybody knows Zydrate Anatomy from Repo, the genetic opera. I mean, uh, there are a vast majority of people. The moment you hear it, Logan, if you do truly, if you ever watch Repo, the genetic I'll, I'll, opera, if there's one song you're going to remember for the rest of your life, it's going to be Zydrate Anatomy. Okay. You, you'll I'll never it forget. It's it's so goddamn <laughs> catchy. It's I did several TikTok videos to that song before ever realizing what it's from. Okay. And I I've done that with multiple things. What I thought you guys one of one of the things speaking of real quick to go back to it I, before we start choosing our stuff. Speaking of audios that I did on TikTok um before I knew what they were from. There were several audios from Deadpool 2 that landed on TikTok that I did that I knew it was Ryan Reynolds, but Deadpool 2 had not dropped in the audios that I was using were not from the trailers. So I had no idea until I watched Deadpool 2. I'm like, dude, I've done like five audios from this. Where the fuck did the audios come from? Like, I mean, I'm talking, I don't mean like, I don't mean like, like two weeks before it was released i'm talking like eight months before the movie dropped and i probably i'm a huge deadpool fan i had to have seen every trailer that was ever made for that so i have no idea where somebody got those audios to put on tiktok to begin with no shit well there's lots of we're not going to get into conspiracy theories because yeah. we need yeah. i have two suggestions for um yeah let's hear topics it. Uh, since it's basically our own top fives or whatever, basically, or just in general. Yep. Uh, favorite comedians. Because mm -hmm. I know I know we've done that for or y'all done that for the like the bracket and stuff. But this where it can be a little bit more personal and singled down to whatever. And then we can all discuss and that conversation could probably go on forever. And the other one is and I know this one will probably get Toby riled up, which will be good. Um, worst TikTok trends. Oh, just worse trends in general. I've, I've got one. TikTok mainly. I've yeah. got one, and of course, it's not not for lists or anything, but bro code rules. 
Oh, I like, like that. Oh, yeah. Spoken or unspoken, things that you do or don't do when it comes to, you know, your bros or, in, you know, conversations that you have with them, topics that you should or should not discuss around your bros, like shit that you don't talk about around, like, your wife or anything like that, if you had a conversation with it's stuff like that. Yeah. Is like it kind of like, you know, the fight rule, uh, fight club rules, you know? <laughs> Fight club rules with your fucking bros. Because, I mean, like, yeah, the yeah. shit that when you're sitting around bullshitting with each other, maybe it'd be around late at night after everybody's kind of gone to bed and you're hanging out at, a, at a, like, a little fucking bonfire or campfire or you're yeah. out camping or you're at the fucking bar or you're at a barbecue and you're just having that side conversation. Like, what's the shit that you are that you can talk to around your bros and what's the shit that you shouldn't talk to around others that maybe you did talk to your bros about? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so anybody else have one? I can, if you guys want, I can read down, kind of read what's there, put it up, and then we can add them. If you guys want, we'll give it a shot. Uh, I see wrestling topics. I see movies and shows. Brandon, you got to have one in your brain. I've thrown in several over the last many weeks. So, uh, right now, it, I don't have any off the top of my head now. This is what we have so far. Okay. Best game okay. shows, nostalgia songs, best gas station snacks, movie soundtracks, best childhood memories, kids cartoons, vintage clothing, best beer, best 90s sitcom, best nuggets, best Netflix series, best 90s songs, serial killers, best gaming franchise, favorite comedians, worst TikTok trends, bro code rules. Probably missed some from the chat tonight. You've got one that says uh, best childhood memories? It's on there. Yeah. 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 What about wildest or worst? Or crazy childhood story or something. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I've got some bad, like, where you could put it in, like, the worst childhood memories, but it's still one of your best childhood memories, right? Like, you got fucked yeah. up, like, a horrible thing happened, but it's still like, bro, I remember this time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, we, I mean, we could literally just change it to childhood memories. The more general it is, the better of a topic it's going to be. When we start talking about... When we start you narrowing don't even have to down into five. a funnel of the topics by like years or very specific things, that's those are going to be those are going to be the podcast where we start with something and then we get completely off topic onto something else for the majority of the podcast. Yeah, you guys see D Lemon's creepiest uncle with the best candy. That's fucking creepy. Funny. Uncle with the best candy. Good God, talk about. Is what there the something you want to talk to us about, D? <laughs> like. I mean, I'm a little offline if, if you want yeah. after this. If you need somebody to talk to, brother, like, we're, we're all here for you, buddy. We're all here for you. <laughs> God buddy. damn. Air hug. Yep. I'll, follow, hug. I'll follow you on TikTok and you can message me. All right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Uh, we're going to call this good then. Nobody else has anything in the studio. That's good. All right. Let's do the thing. No, we'll we'll uh, we'll air D Lemon's Dirty Laundry later. Ooh, yeah. Mopar has got favorite car, so we can oh, add that Richie. to the next one. Okay, Toby. No, I thought it was gonna be worse. Well, TikTok trends, bro code rules. It's gonna be I would one. have, I would have had a field day with either one of those two topics, so yeah, I'm fine with this. Yep, we couldn't lose. All right, yeah. so bro code um, rules. I, I do like Mopar guy's suggestion. I think we need to add that to the list. Favorite cars. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. Add it. That'll that'll get into some heated discussions too. Boy? I think. Like, well, I mean, there's so many that you can talk about. Oh, yeah, that's him. Just look for just look for the smile that looks like it's like bought with Eubens orthodontal money. Yeah, I forget that you I admittedly I asked if it was him because his top nine videos have zero plays. So I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> that's pretty standard for his channel, though. Yeah, this is why Lemon's like, uh, this is why I can't be on this show. <laughs> we are going to sneak them on with a Tuesday or a Thursday show sometime. So stay tuned, everybody. And there's a couple of people that we um, have potentially in the works. A lot of cool stuff coming from July with some uh, some cool friends and stuff. And this is going to be fun. We're going to talk about bro codes and all sorts of good stuff. Logan, welcome back. Not sure he's going to be here for a little bit. July is pretty busy for the Thursdays, but August, September, stuff like that is going to is going to start. Uh, yeah, I don't even, uh, it's going to start dwindling down. But either way, it's good to see need. you. Good to see you guys. I love you yeah. all. This has been fun. Yeah, Logan, this is okay. We definitely need D on a we definitely need D on a Tuesday fucking show. With All right, you. let's line it up. That has to happen. Lemon, find a day that you can hang out with the East Coast at a decent time, which our is going to be nine at six o'clock your time. Uh, you know, get some early dinner, get in here, and we'll make it happen. So, uh, yeah, if anybody that watched tuesday and has a little ptsd apparently like rim said that was yubin's for you page and sorry that all of your for you pages are, are holy shit fuck, if you guys haven't life. seen it please god go watch it 
give it a watch. But anyway, can't thank you guys. And if that was fun, we'll, uh, we'll be back Tuesday. And we'll be back here same time, same place, Thursday. That's all I got. You guys got anything else? No? I got a story I got to tell backstage. Okay, going backstage. Maybe if you guys want to hang out backstage, hit Patreon. Up. I don't even know what's on there. Grim, Grim only bashed like once or twice. That's, that's, pretty, that's yeah. pretty impressive. He did unleash on you in the live TikTok, though. Which so. is fine. Just, that's okay. He's I'm just right. not used to seeing you here. Right, it's been two months, yep. so I'm good with it. Grim was Grim, just, Grim, Grim was here. The tits. He's out. like, how do I join? Oh, just look at me. He's like, how do I get back there? Uh, Lemon, yeah. I'll, I'll shoot you the link. You can come hang out backstage. So, uh, yeah, he's got all the fucking set up. That's some bitch will hop right in. All right, that's all we got. There you go, Grim. There's the tits. Mm-hmm.